Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at how to create a probability plot, sometimes called a normal probability plot or a QQ plot. Uh, and we're going to also look at how to create an empirical CDF. Both of these types of graphs are probability plots of some sort, and they are related to specific data. Now, we're going to select each of these from the graph menu. So let's start with the probability plot. We're going to do one variable at a time. Um, feel free to experiment with the multiple ones, but we're just going to look at one variable because we want to be able to understand what's going on. Pick one of the variables that's in your data set. Uh, maybe we want to pick flavonoids. I haven't looked at that one. Um, now, the distribution option is going to allow you to determine what distribution you are comparing the data to. So do you want to compare it to a normal distribution? This is normally what these probability plots compare it to. But in Minitab, you can compare your data to all, all these other kinds of distributions as well. So logistic, log normal, gamma, exponential, et cetera. So uh, feel free to, again, depending on the kind of data that you have, uh, normal is normally what we want when we want our testing assumptions for hypothesis testing. So I'm going to use the normal one, but uh, play around with some of the other options depending on the kind of fit you have for your data. Maybe the normal one isn't appropriate. Um, you can fill in um, means and standard deviations, but I would recommend leaving these blank. Um, Binitab will then calculate it from the data that we have. Now, the other thing um, to look at here is um, in the dis data display, uh, I'm going to use both symbols and distribution fit. So it's going to plot the data and plot the way that the distribution is plotted. Um, we have the option also to show a 95% confidence interval. Uh, that's just going to give us a little bit more information. Um, some QQ plots just show the line, which is the distribution fit and they don't show the 95% confidence interval, but I'm gonna leave it on here um, so that you can see that it actually can be useful. And then we're gonna hit okay. And then of course, um, we're gonna put labels. This is a normal probability plot of, I believe I am plotting flavonoids. Yes, flavonoids, and then hit OK. Now, normally, if this graph, if this data was distributed normally, what would you expect is that it would more or less fall along the straight line in the middle here. That's what is expected from the normal probability plot. And then you can see that, again, these 95% confidence intervals are the two outer lines. Now, this data does not look very normal. As you can see, this does not follow a straight line at all. So um, I, would, I would definitely say if you were trying to use this uh, as input to a, a hypothesis test or something that assumed normality, this is probably not very normal. On the other hand, something that would actually look more normal would be something like the ASH data from the same data set. This much more smoothly fits into the straight line. Almost all of the points fall within that 95% margin. And you do have a couple of outliers, but they're mostly in the tails, as opposed to this one where... Um, there, it's not following the line at all. It's very curvy. This is suggesting that the, it follows some other type of distribution. And again, uh, experiment with what the distribution might be. And that might give you some information about how to transform your data. Maybe if it's a log normal plot, maybe you would want to log your data for a further analysis. There are lots of options that these probability plots can give you uh, as terms of information about the data. Now, the second plot that we were going to graph was the empirical CDF. And again, what this normally does is it, it calculates the probability up to a particular point. It's like essentially plotting percentiles. And for a normally distributed variable, what this would normally create is kind of like an S curve, like a logistic curve. But let's look and see what this data does. Um, 
This was flavonoid. So let's see what that does. Um, again, you can adjust like with the uh, probability plot, you can adjust which distribution the data is expected to fit to because it's going to give you information again on the graph about that expectation. Uh, and again, both the line and the distribution fit. Uh, and of course, I'm going to give it a title, um, empirical uh, cumulative distribution function of flavonoids, and I'm going to hit OK. And so again, the with the red line here, that is the theoretical value, and the blue line is the expected value for a normal probability plot, or, or the, from the actual data. Um, red line is the expected normal distribution. Blue line, because it's so choppy, you can tell that's based on the actual data. So this doesn't look quite as eh, as the normal probability plot did, um, but the distribution of ash, actually, you can see it does a much better job of fitting very nicely the blue line to this red line as opposed to the flavonoids. It is way off in most of the data. Uh, and so, again, this would sort of reinforce this idea uh, from our probability plot that Maybe this isn't really normally distributed variable.